Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, Premier, Minister, invited guests. Thanks very much for uh, coming out to this great town of Milton. I said on more than one occasion, of course, uh, there's only two types of people in this world. Those of us that are Meltonians are those of them who wish they were, but a great big Milton, uh, welcome. Very much look forward to the, uh, the announcements by the uh, Premier and the Minister here uh, this morning. And of course, uh, the Premier is well aware of something that I and Council of the Past have been advocating for quite some time. So this is the uh, time for that great announcement. So great big uh, drum roll. So Minister, let's hear from you as the great things that's going to happen here in Melton and Halton. Thank you. And much appreciated. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you, Mayor Krantz, uh, for that uh, kind introduction. Uh, it's uh, great to be here in Milton alongside uh, you, Mayor Krantz, uh, Premier Ford, uh, Minister Tangri, uh, MPP Kusindova, and uh, Phil Verster as well, um, and so many of you who are crucial to keeping our province moving. Under the leadership of Premier Ford, our government has the most ambitious public transit infrastructure plan in our province's history. We're making historic investments over the next decade to build the roads, highways and transit our growing province desperately needs. This includes over $27 billion to renew, build and expand highways in every corner of Ontario. I understand the frustrations of gridlock firsthand experiencing it every day in my commute from Brampton to Toronto. Each minute spent in a car or waiting for a train means another minute not spent with family, friends and loved ones. That's why our government is focused on investing in projects that will shave time off your commute so you can spend time doing what matters the most. Of course, this starts with building a transit system that gets riders where they need to go when they need to get there. And equally as important, having a transit system that keeps costs down for hardworking people, students and seniors. This is exactly what we did by launching one fare in February, which means commuters now pay only once when transferring between GO Transit, the TTC and other transit agencies in the GTA. Just think about what those savings mean when you multiply them by a family of four who rely on public transit every day. Premier Ford, Minister Thanagaslam and myself have heard firsthand what a game changer this has been. Because no one should have to skip class, miss out on that next job or big moment with their loved ones because of the price of transit. With that, it is my pleasure to turn it over to the Premier to talk about the next step in Ontario's transit vision. Thank you very much. Boy, well, good morning, everyone. What a what a beautiful day, and yesterday was a beautiful day as well. And thank you, Prab, for that uh, kind introduction. I'm thrilled to be back here in the beautiful city of Milton, alongside Minister Sarkari that you just heard from, Minister Tangri, MPP Natalia Kusindova, and a uh, great CEO of Metrolinx, Phil Verster. Thank you for coming. But before I get started, I want to give a big thank you to everyone here at the Milton Go Yard for hosting us today. I also want to acknowledge my good friend, my good pal, Mayor Krantz, the longest serving mayor in Canadian history. Think of that, folks, the longest serving mayor in Canadian history. We absolutely love him. I think the world of him. And Mayor, you're doing an amazing uh, job and all the great work that you're doing for the people of Milton. And I can tell you, people in Milton appreciate you and thank you for joining us today. Here in Milton and in communities across the province, our population is growing at an unprecedented pace. Just think of these numbers, folks. Over the last two years alone, we've welcomed over a million newcomers to Ontario. That's a million people all coming in within a two year span. Actually, it's a lot more than a million. Uh, and that, that growth the, is the likes of which this province has never seen before. And they're coming here because they know there's jobs here. It's a quality of life here. And we're gonna to continue to build on uh, everything we can to make sure when they arrive and, and newcomers come here that they have a good paying job. Unlike previous governments that failed the plan for growth, we've embarked on the most ambitious plan to build in Ontario's history. 
I'm going to rattle off a few of these uh, builds that we're doing. Just in healthcare alone, we've added over 3,000 new hospital beds, and we're investing nearly $50 billion over the next decade to support more than 50 new hospital projects across the province to add another 3,000 beds. In education, I had a good conversation with uh, Minister Lecce this morning. Our government has invested more than $3.6 billion in capital construction projects with $1.3 billion in new funding this year, including for two new schools, elementary schools in Milton, for close to 1,700 students. But since 2018, we've built seven new schools in Milton and one very large expansion of a school. And we're getting shovels on the ground for major transportation projects. For example, we've expanded Highway 401 with 18 kilometers of new lanes between Mississauga and Milton. We're building the Bradford Bypass and Highway 413. We're also making great progress to transform public transit in the region as part of our largest transit expansion in North America. We recently launched one fair, as the minister said, and uh, Minister Thanagaslam did an incredible job with that as well, to eliminate the cost of transferring between local transit systems and GTA, saving transit riders on an average of $1,600 a year. We're bringing fast and reliable transit to downtown Mississauga and Brampton with the construction of the new Hazel McCallion line. Work is also ongoing on four new subway projects in the GTA. Basically, we're, we're doubling the size of the subway system, including the Ontario line, the Scarborough uh, subway extension, the Young North subway extension into York Region, and the Eglinton Crosstown West extension. And we're getting it done, folks. And friends, today we're here to announce the largest GO train expansion in more than a decade. Starting later this month on April 28th, we're adding more than 300 new weekly trips, supporting two-way all-day GO service on some of the province's busiest train routes. This means more options and greater convenience on Milton, Lakeshore West, Lakeshore East, Kitchener, Stouffville, and the UP Express lane, lines. We're adding evening train service on the Stouffville line, for those traveling to and from the airport, every second UP Express train will soon be non-stop between Union Station and Pearson Airport. And for commuters in Milton, we're adding an additional morning rush hour train uh, to Union Station and extra afternoon trip back to Milton Station. And as we do, Mayor Krantz, you have my word. We're going to keep urging the federal government to join us in a true cost-sharing partnership to build a fully separated passenger rail line so we can finally make two-way, all-day GO train service a reality here in Milton. Our government is ready and eager to invest. Friends, today's announcement represents a 15% increase in GO service. Along with almost $100 billion, we're investing in transportation infrastructure, including roads and highways. This historic expansion in GO train service will help fight gridlock on our roads, reduce travel times, and allow people to spend more time at home with their families. We're building transportation, we're building infrastructure, we're building hospitals, we're building long-term care, we're expanding service, we're keeping people and goods moving, including right here in Milton. And again, thank you, Mayor, for having us to your beautiful town, and thank you for joining us today. And uh, may God bless the people of Ontario. Thank you. We will now go to reporters' questions. Reporters, please line up at the mic behind me. Please identify yourselves by name and outlet. It'll be one question, one follow-up. First reporter. Good morning, Premier Megan Fitzpatrick from CBC News. Hey, Just want to ask, hi, uh, ask you about the timing of today's announcement. Is it coincidental at all that you're making this announcement today with the by-election just around the corner? Is this a ploy to get votes from voters here in Milton? No, we're, we're out there uh, making announcements every single day in every region of this province, and this is a great announcement uh, for the, the folks in Milton and everyone that rides the uh, GO train. So we're going to keep making announcements, not just here, but everywhere in the province, and just telling people uh, some of the great things that we're working together as a team through municipal uh, cooperation with municipalities to build homes and, and transit and infrastructure. That's our plan, and we're going to keep going at it. 
I wanted to ask you about um, an issue last week about uh, intimate partner violence and the bill that uh, passed second reading. Just to be clear, are, are you now prepared to declare it an epidemic? Yes, and what we're, we're doing, we put it to the Justice Committee. You know, there's one thing to pass the bill. There's another thing to put teeth into it, sit down, because it's a, a very serious uh, situation we're facing here in Ontario. And I, I mentioned uh, the conversation I had with a dad uh, for 45 minutes that, that lost uh, his grandkids. And, and I, I actually, I talked to him two days in a row. And, you know, he, his, his words were, thank you. Uh, our goal is to make sure this never happens to any other family. So we take it very serious. And we'll do everything we can to uh, stop uh, gender violence. Hey, good morning, Premier Colin DeMello from Global News. Colin, uh, I like that blue. You wore that blue for me, didn't you? A T.O. You know, blue jacket. I really, I'm, waiting. I'm, a, I'm a double X. Sometimes if I eat a lot of triple X. I'm wearing a jacket that says Toronto on it and Milton. I apologize, Mayor. Uh, it is the greatest. Anyway, uh, I wanted to ask about health care. So it seems yes. like your government is prepared to make nurse practitioners care providers similar to doctors, uh, but there might be some negotiation with the federal government. Can you lay out exactly what your government wants to do with nurse practitioners so that they don't do extra billing? Yeah, thanks for that, Colin. So there, there's a little loophole in the uh, Canada Health Act, and we're, we're trying to work with them. Our, our minister, Sylvia Jones, is working with the federal health minister. I think the world of nurse practitioners are part of our uh, our plan on and making sure that we have more prim primary care teams throughout the, the province, and that's where we invested, largest investment, close to $700 million, adding about 600,000 people uh, to connect them with primary care teams. But nurse practitioners, they play a critical role everywhere, but where they really play a critical role in rural areas that we can't get docs up in uh, far northern areas, but I, I think the world of them. So we're working on it, and uh, hopefully the, the feds will come along with us. And when it comes to housing, we asked the Prime Minister and the, and the Housing Minister uh, last week about uh, the, the $5 billion fund, and they said that they are unwilling, while they'll hear out Ontario's position, they are unwilling to give money to a province that still uh, has restrictive housing policies when it comes to fourplexes. Are, are you willing to forego some of that funding from the federal government, even if it means sticking with your fourplex plan? You know, it's funny, I watched you ask that, that question. And uh, what we're saying is there's 444 municipalities. We don't, know, we don't want to overrule the municipalities. They know best. The federal government, the provincial government doesn't know best. The municipalities know best. And um, we're going to work with them. Uh, some may want as of right. Uh, some may not. I know, you know quite a few that don't. But let, let's all work together. I just want to be collaborative and uh, not just to take that approach like the feds, well, we're just going alone. Well, you can't, you can't work that way. I, I want to work with the federal government, municipal government, and the provincial government. If you know, we all work together, we get things done. We all want the same goal. We all want to build homes. So uh, let's work together. You get a bigger bang for, you know, for the money that you're putting out there. Hi, Premier Laura Hi. Stone, Globe and hey, Mail. Laura. Uh, just to to jump on Colin's question there. So. Um, the Premier of Alberta is upset, to put it mildly, that the federal government would be negotiating directly with municipalities. So does that mean you are okay as Premier of Ontario to allow the feds to make deals with municipalities um, with that funding and just bypass the province? Well, you know, for forever, as long as I can ever remember, it flows down into the province, province distributes. But I, I guess they want to do things differently. I just want to work with them. I, we, we have a goal to build homes. We have over a million new Canadians that have come in over the last two years. They need homes. People that have been here their whole lives need homes. And all I'm saying is if we all work together and uh, pool the money, uh, we, we can get more done. And we can get it done a lot quicker rather than they have a plan, we have a plan, municipalities have a plan. I think it's a no-brainer. Well, let's be collaborative and, and cooperate with each other. So. We're, we're going to let the municipalities decide, and uh, I appreciate any money coming from the federal government. So I'm, I'm, I'm okay with, uh, you know, deal, letting the municipalities deal with this, not the federal or provincial governments. 
Okay, thank you. And just on the, the Milton by-election, your candidate in this riding was previously a Liberal member, donor, volunteer, supporter. The Liberals are calling him a turncoat, a floor crosser. <laughs> How should the public trust that he's truly dedicated to your party now? Uh, the same way we formed two uh, large majority governments. And I'll go back to our family, our family, be it Rob, myself, my brother, uh, Rob, or my father, or, or uh, my nephew, we get elected with traditional Liberal voters. We get elected with traditional NDP voters and with PC voters. Um, and, you know, I welcome all Liberals. That's how we got elected. You can't get elected in this country, in this province, in any city based on one stripe. I'm not big on political stripes. I'm for the people and what makes sense for the people are lowering taxes, more money in their pockets, making sure we build infrastructure, hospitals and uh, schools. That's what people want. So I welcome and a message to any liberal out there. You want to join our team? Give me a call on my cell phone and you're welcome because not thousands, not tens of thousands, not hundred thousand, probably over a million traditional liberal voters voted for us. So thank you. And I welcome your vote. And I include the NDP and the green too on that one. Sean Cowan from CHCH News, and my question is for the Minister of Transportation. Yes. Thank you. The Hamilton LRT, what's your opinion? Do you think it should be maintained, the people who maintain and operate it, privatized or unionized for the Hamilton LRT? Uh, thank you for that question. Uh, look, we're uh, always looking to work with our municipal partners. The Hamilton LRT is a really critical project uh, uh, for uh, this government. Uh, you know, I had a great meeting with uh, Mayor Horvath as well uh, just about uh, last week, uh, I believe, uh, speaking to the importance uh, of the Hamilton LRT. So uh, as we move forward, we'll continue to work with those uh, partners to ensure that uh, we're delivering on it. Right now, we've got uh, amazing early works um, on the project. Uh, we've uh, uh, visited the site uh, as well. Uh, there's a lot of excitement there. Uh, and so we'll to continue to work through this uh, as uh, we move forward on that project. Thank you. And speaking with Go Train expansion, what's uh, Niagara looking like all day, full, all day, every day to Niagara? What's the future there looking like? Uh, well, Niagara is a really important uh, line for us, along with uh, today's announcement of uh, you know 300 more trains every week on the Go Transit uh, system. Uh, with Niagara, uh, we, uh, speaking to many of the local stakeholders there, have been able uh, to take their consideration and adjust uh, schedule timings. Uh, you know, on the weekends, it's a very popular line as people come in uh, to uh, watch uh, Jays games or just uh, into uh, the city of Toronto for uh, a night or an evening. Uh, we've adjusted schedules to be able to better match uh, consumer uh, patterns of traveling. You know, we were the government that delivered Go Transit uh, and Go Trains to Niagara earlier uh, than expected. We added uh, three. Uh, weekday trains uh, as well or earlier this year uh, so it's a very very important line for us and we continue to have conversations also with uh, uh, CN and our teams there to see how we can continue to build on that uh, capacity as well so it's a very important line uh, some of the changes here uh, will absolutely uh, help reflect uh, the needs uh, of the people of uh, Niagara and we'll continue to build on that as we move forward thank you this will be the last reporter Morning, Premier. Yes, morning, Premier. Uh, my name is Bam with Milton today. Yes. Uh, the question is on the uh, on the on the expansion of the of the gold service. How yes. committed is the province to bring to make the old day to a, uh, a gold train Milton a reality? Yeah. Because in the past we've seen the announcement that it tends to fizzle. Yeah. No. Great. Great uh, question. We're one thousand percent committed. We're going to make it happen. And uh, again, we're just going to continue uh, working on it and delivering the best service we can to uh, the, the people of Milton. We were asking the federal government, and so we have a dedicated line there to work with us, and uh, I'm confident they'll, they'll come to the table. This will be the last question. Yep. Thanks for that. And on the Campbellville Quarry, uh, I know you've asked, uh, recently asked last week, um, you mentioned that you'd like to see the EA process play out. Uh, yes. But many in the community are saying, why bother with the EA if, if you're just going to uh, say in your words, you, don't, you need to stop if it's not something that the committee wants? And why not use a tool like MZO, for example? Yeah, well, it's under uh, environmental assessment. We encourage all uh, members of the community to write their comments in. And then when that time comes, uh, we'll, we'll make a, a decision on that. But thank you for that. So folks, thank you so much. Again, thanks, Mayor, for having us out and our whole team. If there's one thing you notice everywhere we're going, 
there's one thing in common in every municipality, we're building. We're building the hospitals, we're building the schools, building transit, we're expanding highways, building long-term care. So it's only thanks to each and every one of you. It's not about our government. It's about every person in Ontario that's pitching in. It's about the people here working at GO, helping us out in every other region, and we're building homes. So thank you so much, and God bless. Bye-bye.